Hello, how are you doing? Now, I know what you're thinking. It's a bit early to have a best books list of 2022. And yes, yes it is. <laughs> but at the beginning of the year, a lot of people put lists together of books that are coming out over the course of the year that they're really excited about. And two journalists at Esquire have come up with a list of 17 books that they think are going to be amongst the best books um, that are published this year. And so I thought it would be fun for us to go through the list together. And I've made a cup of tea in my big Golden Girls mug. And uh, so I'm going to go through this group of 17 books and give any descriptions of them or any thoughts or feelings I, I have about them. And uh, so some of these books I was aware of already. I've already made my list of uh, books that I'm most anticipating for this year. And I'll put a link to that in the description below in case you haven't seen that. But some of these books I've not come across before and um, sound really good. And just the list as a whole sounds really good, I think. First off is the novel that a lot of people are already talking about and discussing and debating and I've already read and made a whole video about it, which is To Paradise by Hanya Yanagihara, this big, sprawling, ambitious novel that spans three different centuries and involves many different characters, many of whom share the same name. And uh, yeah, I tried to express my mixed feelings that I, I had about this novel, though I, I feel like I came out sounding a bit like negative uh, about it, though, yeah, I really want to emphasize again that the actual reading experience of this I found so enjoyable. It's just, I think, because I just finished the book and then thinking about it in retrospect and trying to figure out how it all hangs together or whether it even does all like sort of go together, all the different parts of it. But as, as they remark, you know, it's an incredibly timely novel because the second half of the book is basically set in a dystopian future that is rife with many diseases. And I think one of the extraordinary things about this book, which I didn't mention in my video, but Hanya talked about in an in interview that she did, which um, I, I read in a, a magazine that she had conceived of this idea of this dystopian future and uh, that's filled with pandemics before the recent pandemic of 2020 actually happened. Now, she hadn't actually, she had the structure of it, but she hadn't actually started writing it. Um, so I think she, she was writing this during the pandemic, which it, did, it is reflected in the text. And like as Bob the Booker noted in his review of this, um, that the, the date of 2020 and the pandemic of 2020 is noted in this dystopian future. And there's something a bit jarring and shocking about reading that date and thinking about this experience of our current times, which we're still going through as thinking about it in retrospect. Um, so yeah, there's still a lot to consider in this novel. And I, I know a lot of people have already decided whether they're going to read it or not going to read it. Um, but I've been getting a lot of responses of people who say that they are really enjoying reading this as well, um, so which is wonderful to hear. Joan is OK by Y. Key Wayne. This is a novel about an emergency room doctor uh, whose parents move back to China. And this creates a kind of crisis in their, their family amongst uh, this, this doctor and her brothers about their Chinese-American identity. Um, it's uh, described as like bitingly funny and, uh, and having a lot of uncomfortable humor. I haven't read this author's much acclaim novel Chemistry. Um, but Roxane Gay, she says of this uh, new novel that she uh, enjoyed it very much. And it's like sharp weariness, um, which is an interesting way to describe it. And uh, though she says that, that the ending feels a bit rushed and incomplete, um, but, uh, but overall that she really enjoyed it and has continued thinking about it. So um, yeah, I think this sounds really intriguing. And, and I like that sort of sense of a kind of um, uncomfortable humor at the, the center of this book. So I'm looking forward to reading it. Violets by Alex Hyde. This is a much acclaimed debut novel, which I already talked about as one of my most anticipated books of the year. And it's uh, been selected as one of the BBC Radio 4 books at bedtime, which I've never listened to before. And I'd probably quite enjoy, though I'd worry I'd just fall asleep while <laughs> listening to, to readings from this book. But anyway, um, this is a story of two different women uh, towards the end of World War II who live in different places but who share a child um, between them. And it's uh, it's about their, their stories. They're very different stories. And um, I think it's meant to be like quite 
poetic or have like quite an interesting structure um, to it. And uh, yeah, I'm just really intrigued by the sound of the story. A Very Nice Girl by Imogen Crimp. And this is uh, another debut novel. And uh, it was written by um, someone who studied uh, women's literature at a university and also studied to be a sinner. And the novel is about a young woman that is living in London and struggling to live here financially because as I know, it's a very expensive place to live and she meets a man that works in finance and they have an affair with each other so um, it's about their relationship but also her experiences um, trying to survive in the city and uh, Claire Fuller um, who wrote Unsettled Ground she says that touching on feminism power finances and the pleasures and dangers of a new relationship this book is an assured debut so this is a book I've not come across before and now I'm really looking forward to Mona by Pola Oleksarek, and this is by an Argentinian writer, um, but the, the novel is about a Peruvian student that moves to California to study there, and it's uh, described as a violent and hallucinogenic trip um, because uh, this, this student, um, she's really into smoking and drugs, and um, she finds it uh, sort of wryly funny that uh, she's sort of glamorized there for her identity as a person of color. Um, which um, she didn't really conceive of herself before moving to America. And so it's kind of poking fun at Americans' obsession with identity. And uh, she takes a trip to Sweden um, where she hopes to kind of escape this. And there she finds herself kind of glamorized in, in a different way, which she finds uncomfortable amongst the um, literary bros sort of society that she, she finds there. They say that you should expect the wry darkness of a Tessa Moshveg uh, with the sparkling lucidity of Rachel Cusk, um, which gives me slight pause about it, but I'm cautiously excited about this novel. Pure Color by Sheila Hetty, and this uh, novel is uh, by a Canadian writer who I've never read before but always wanted to. Um, she's published several books and her most recent book, um, I think it's her most recent book called Motherhood, is an autobiographical novel um, which a lot of people were discussing and talking about and I think I have a copy on my shelves but I've not got to yet. Um, but maybe I should read it um, before this comes out in mid-February. And it's the, the story of a woman woman's life um, going through the entirety of her life um, while musings about about the experience of life and uh, death and it's described as a surreal contemplation on how we spend our brief time on earth and uh, yeah I, I love books that encase the entirety of a life in a single book especially if that book is quite short and I think this is only just over 200 pages long um, so I find that really intriguing. At Certain Points We Touch by Lauren John Joseph and this is a novel about an individual that's walking home from a club and then discovers or realizes the significance of the the date and then it goes back in time 10 years uh, to tell the story of this individual's life leading up um, to this this evening and uh, which um, sounds like a really intriguing story and this is an author I've been uh, quite excited to, to read before um, though this is their debut novel uh, because I'd seen um, this author speak before at Charleston um, the the museum that's uh, sort of to the the Bloomsbury group and um, they were speaking there about uh, Virginia Woolf's novel Orlando um, in a really interesting way and uh, so yeah I've just been quite intrigued intrigued to read this author's fiction. Homesickness by Colin Barrett. Now several years ago an article came out about the Irish new wave of, of fiction and Colin Barrett was included amongst uh, this uh, these few authors that were talked about as being this sort of like new wave and voices in Irish fiction and uh, everyone has been eagerly waiting um, for Colin Barrett's debut novel and this isn't it. This is a second collection of short stories because um, his his first collection, Young Skins, I really enjoyed and I, I thought there's such like moving and inventive stories and um, yeah just sort of like really striking new voice. This fiction is quite often like contemporary 
set and um, just has a real conciseness and precision to his prose um, to describe modern life. Bless the Daughter Raised by a Voice in Her Head by Warson Shire, um, which is an incredible title. And these are poems uh, by a Somali British writer um, that's most famous as being a collaborator of Beyonce's. And uh, some of lines from her poetry have appeared in Beyonce songs. And uh, so this is um, her very first like full collection, though. And uh, it's described as um, being poems about migration, womanhood, trauma, and uh, resilience. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to diving into some of these poems, because I don't often read all that much poetry. Yan Mungo by Douglas Stewart, a novel which I already talked about I'm really looking forward to by the Booker Prize winner, and this is Second novel is about the sectarian conflict in uh, Glasgow uh, between uh, Catholics and Protestants and two young men um, that are on either side of that conflict and meet and fall in love with each other and have a relationship with each other. And I feel like this is sort of perfect to, to read now after just the new movie of West Side Story came out, which I watched and absolutely loved. And so it's that same kind of storyline of uh, Romeo and Juliet of kind of across um, lovers across a you know social social and political divide and uh, there's already been a lot of talk and chatter about this book because of the very striking UK cover of it and uh, that surprisingly like some people are quite critical of it people that I wouldn't you know think would be critical of it um, but I, I think it's amazing and awesome, this image of Wolfgang Tillmans. And the US cover is a bit more tame and, and sort of tones down on that, but still has a bit of eroticism to it. But, uh, but yeah, I'm so looking forward to reading this. Lost and Found, a memoir by Catherine Schultz. Uh, this is by a Pulitzer Prize winning writer uh, describing her experiences with uh, grief that, that comes from war and the, the pandemic. And uh, I have to say, looking at the cover and title of this book, it's, it's not a, a book that I'm instantly drawn to. Uh, but uh, but the, the subject sounds very good, and this is obviously a very highly regarded author. Um, also, the cover um, has a blurb by uh, Helen MacDonald, who says it's an extraordinary gift of a book. And I really trust her judgment, because I've loved um, her memoir that I read. So, uh, so yeah, I would be keen to try this. The Candy House by Jennifer Egan. This is a novel about a tech entrepreneur who comes up with an idea uh, where people can download and externalize their memories uh, called Own Your Unconscious. And uh, so it's about a number of characters and the, the consequences of this technological development in the year 2010 and follows them over several years. And they are some of the same characters um, from Jennifer Egan's novel A uh, Visit from the Goon Squad, squad, squad uh, which I've actually not read. And uh, so I, I'm sort of uncertain whether I'd actually want to read this um, before reading A Visit from the Goon Squad. And, uh, uh, but uh, I know it's that's been like a much hailed novel, um, but I've just never got round to. I, I have read Egan's novel Manhattan Beach, which I really enjoyed. So um, I think you know her writing is definitely um, worth the investment of of more time. Um, so if you've read A Visit from the Goon Squad and would recommend I read that before um, this is published in April, then uh, please let me know in the, the comments below because um, I got this like lovely advanced copy in a kind of candy pink, um, which which is very appropriate um, for, for the novel. But, uh, but yeah, so I'm, I am quite excited about this, but just uncertain because I haven't read that earlier book. Here Goes Nothing by Steve Toltz. And this is a novel by the Australian writer um, who's probably most famous for his book, A Fraction of the Whole, um, which again, I've not read, though I have read his novel, Quicksand, and I really enjoyed that. And so uh, this is a story about a man who is a bit ticked off about being murdered. And I think it's following his perspective in the afterlife as he's watching over his wife who's expecting their, their baby and uh, trouble is coming for her as well. So there's that suspenseful aspect, but also a pandemic is on the way. So I think it's commenting about our, our modern times as well. And I feel like not too many Australian authors get published here in the UK. So I'm always really excited to see when new Australian fiction is coming out. Don't Put Yourself on Toast by Freddie Taylor and 
And this is a, another memoir, um, which is also about grief. Um, when the, the author discovered when he was in his early 20s that his father um, was diagnosed with brain cancer. Um, so it's his recounting his experiences of that alongside his mother's medical notes. And um, I think it takes quite like a unique perspective on, on the experience of, of grief and, and losing someone um, because it's um, the book is, they, they compare the book um, to Rachel Kahn's uh, book, Goodbye Vitamin or Goodbye Vitamin, um, which uh, I thought was really good, um, as well as Brian Washington's novel uh, Memorial, um, which I also really enjoyed. So I'm um, just on the basis of those two comparisons. This is a book I'm really looking forward to as well. Time is a Mother by Ocean Vaughn. And as I said, I don't read all that much poetry, but I think Ocean Vaughn's collection, Night Sky with Exit Wounds, is one of the most extraordinary books of poetry that I've read in the, the past decade. And um, so I'm looking forward to this uh, a lot. Um, in it, he uh, there's poems where he reflects on the, the loss of his mother, and they say he does so with tenderness and introspection. The Premonitions Bureau by Sam Knight, and this is a book um, that looks into the story of John Barker, who was a psychiatrist um, that investigated the power of premonitions and came to really believe in premonitions, um, like the um, he investigated premonitions like the Aberfam disaster in, in Wales, um, which I talked about was the, the basis of a, a new novel called A Terrible Kindness that I talked about in a, a recent book haul video. Um, but yeah, and, and how there's a whole sort of like group that um, came um, to believe in the power of, of premonitions because of uh, times when they actually came true and how um, this man, John Barker, um, came to believe that he would have an early death himself. And so it's looking about uh, into like issues to do with chance and coincidence in, in our lives and how that plays a factor. And um, yeah, which is a, su a subject that I am sort of like cautiously interested in, um, though this book does come with the blurb uh, by Patrick Radden Keefe, um, who, who wrote the incredible book Empire of Pain, which I, I read last year. And he calls it stunning and enveloping, unsettling book, gorgeously written and profound, um, which, yeah, sounds really interesting. And also, apparently, this is um, going to be developed into a series by uh, Amazon Studios. Um, so yeah, I think it is a book to look out for. And finally, in May, the novel Either Or by Elif Batuman is coming out. And this novel is also a sequel um, to her novel The Idiot, um, which I did read and which I mostly enjoyed but had some slight issues with, like my friend Anna James absolutely loved it and I wasn't head over heels in love with it. So this is another book that I'm, I'm not sure I want to get to just because, yeah, I had sort of mixed feelings uh, about that that book. But I know a lot of people loved The Idiot and, um, and yeah, I'm sure I would really enjoy it. It continues to follow the story of Selin in the, the second year of her university education where she's uh, reflecting on the experiences that she had over a summer when she went abroad, um, which is described in the the novel *The Idiot*, and it's uh, it's um, the the summary of this book. Um, describes it as uh, on the plus side, her life feels like the plot of an exciting novel. On the other hand, why do so many novels have crazy abandoned women in them? Um, which is, yeah, a great um, like summary. And um, yeah, it does make me really intrigued to, to read it. So yeah, I think I, I will probably get to that. And I'm sure a lot of people will be discussing it. But uh, let me know in the comments if you're really looking forward to any of these books, or if you've read them already and have thoughts about them and would agree or disagree that they're the, the best book of of the, the year or amongst the best books of, of the year. Uh, so thank you for watching and I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.